that I got in, in science when I learned that you could be paid to study and you would travel a lot. So it was really not very deep. I really liked math, math and physics a lot in high school. And then I, you know, was exposed to this new career. My family, um, you know, in the United States, would say blue collar or really we didn't have uh, people who went to university or anything like that. So for me, it was kind of new to see the career that you could be an academic. So that's how I got it. And once I started doing uh, computer science in particular, I fell in love with it. It's often hard to be different, right? So I have worked in projects that had a hundred people and I was the only female. I had departments that were quite large and I was the only female. On the other hand, uh, being different also brings some advantages. I think that in some way, uh, if you do well, you can have a platform, you can have access to other people because many uh, leaders, they do want to enable more diversity in computer science or in engineering. And this is not out of being good of heart is because you get better science, better engineering when you have a broader set of perspectives. There's a lot of implicit bias that most females, we do not like, we do not look like we like math and, and, and science and that we could excel. It is not really that people think we are not capable. I think it is the idea that maybe we have different interests, that we like other things, more people-oriented jobs. People forget that these days, science and engineering jobs, they are people jobs also. Collaboration is a must in those fields. Role models are important uh, because we cannot dream big if we don't see a path as possible. So whenever we see a scientist, you know, from a recur, from you know, engineers that is looks like us, that helps a lot. Uh, in particular, I've been involved with advancing the research careers. The people who will decide to remain in graduate school and get a PhD. Uh, a lot of people who get PhD in computer science, they end up going to do industry research, some go to academia. So I'm part of a, a group that is, try, is um, aiming to wide participation, a wider participation of women, people with disabilities, African American, Hispanics, Native Americans, and uh, just the idea of bringing all those perspectives. The way we work is the following. <laughs> one, one action that I really like is that we take around 500 female students for a day and a half, and we expose them to a lot of uh, uh, tips and guidance coming from very successful women, and we do a lot of networking, and we also encourage them to network among themselves so that the future stars already have this start. We do a similar thing for African-American, Hispanics and people with disabilities where uh, we usually have 150 uh, of those uh, masters or beginning PhD students, around maybe 30 uh, people who have a, a very successful career in, in our field. And again, it's about giving them guidance, showing all of us, reminding all of us that failure is a part of science. If we try and we succeed in everything, likely we are not really trying to advance the state of art. If, if you're trying to do something different, you, are fail, you fail. And we think that bringing this idea to women and people from underrepresented populations is particularly important. One thing is that for every um, paper that you may have in Nature or any other journal that is amazing, you probably have 10 that were rejected for any important uh, grant that you may get, you also have many rejected. And I think that message is uh, very helpful. People say, follow your passion. 
And I think this is true, but that gives the impression that we are born knowing our passion. I think I would like to adapt that to say, try out different things. You may be surprised what can be your passion.